Um, I want to thank um, Ed and, and all of you for having me here today. I mean, it's a real privilege to be talking to such an inspirational audience and also a good chance to come out to the countryside. And I also look forward to enlightening you on uh, where the name of my talk, Closed Loop or Where Nothing Comes From. So I'm going to be talking uh, to you today about how our thinking at Warn Again around the problem of textile waste has evolved over the past seven years. And hopefully this will provide useful parallels and insights around how innovation and collaboration are key to driving values-based businesses in a rapidly changing world. So I'm going to start with some pretty pictures here to help tell the story of Warren again up until today. But the images stop there um, because our current work has no pictures. Our vision has led us into a space that doesn't quite exist yet. So we started, here we go, back in 2005 with a vision to eliminate textile waste and to rejuvenate regional manufacturing in the UK. No small feat. Um, we have over a a 1 million tons of textile waste going to landfill in the UK every year. So the idea of upcycling this textile waste, keeping it from landfill, seemed like a pretty good idea. Now, um, I'm hoping to liven up the after lunch session, so I brought a prize with me. I've got two pairs of Pants to Poverty underwear <laughs> for anyone who can help with a definition of upcycling. Does anyone want to give it a stab? We've got recycling and upcycling. I'm sure many of you know the answer to this. Who wants the pants the most? <laughs> Here we go. That's it. That's exactly it. What's your, what's your name? Britta. Britta, you were just up. Can we hand this over to Britta? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Excellent. I'm sorry, the only size they had left was large, so I'm going to be stuck with that. <laughs> Nothing personal. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's the idea, the process of, of taking something considered waste and turning it into a product of higher value, like these trainers here, which um, were our first range of footwear back in 2005. And these here are made from all sorts of weird and wonderful materials. And um, we've got ex-military parachutes. And we've got old men's um, suits from Oxfam. And even some prison blankets. Then our next range uh, was made out of, um, those are end of row uh, t-shirt fabric. Um, some more military parachutes. We've got car scrap leather from the automobile industry and even some sandals which have been made out of car seat belts. Now, we started our manufacturing, um, it was based in China, um, because at the time, over 80% of all the world's footwear was manufactured in China, so we had very little choice. And as this didn't look to be changing anytime soon, we decided to move from footwear into bags and accessories. Um, that type of manufacturing is a lot more prevalent in, in nearer to home like Europe. So we moved from China um, to this factory here in Portugal. And to create real impact in the world, um, we really strived for scale. And rather than just searching out random sources of waste from, from different places, we decided to target large companies as a source for high volume textile waste. And so um, our first phone call went out to Virgin Atlantic. And uh, we asked them if they had any old textiles laying around that they wanted to get rid of. And they kindly sent us this warehouse full of very brightly colored um, airline seat covers. They were in the process of refitting a bunch of old planes. And so we turned those into the Worn Again Virgin range back in 2008. We then got a phone call from Eurostar, who um, had heard what we were up to and said, hey, we've got a bunch of old staff uniforms that we want to get rid of. Is there anything interesting that you can do with these? At the same time, we heard that Virgin balloon flights had a few decommissioned hot air balloons 
and we <coughs> combined the two to create the Bon Voyage collection. And of course, this gave us an excellent excuse to do a photo shoot in a hot air balloon. This is um, me and my business partner, Jamie. And we've got a model there in her hot air balloon jacket. And again, a very sunny day, we lucked out. And perhaps a more familiar face. We've got Branson modeling his bespoke worn again jacket, um, modeling in front of his, his china cabinet, not so glamorous, in the dining room. Um, but it was around this time where we started to reflect on our business model, as we often did as an innovation company. And we decided to explore something a little bit more interesting. We were witnessing all these large companies getting rid of, throwing away all this textile waste. We also saw them buying in loads of products for procurement, for internal use, um, out of textiles as well. And we thought, well, why don't we try and replace some of those products with ones made from their own textile waste? Sounds a little bit easier, I think, than it actually was, or, or perhaps not. Um, and so we, we had gotten to know Eurostar through um, the last project, and uh, we thought we'd invite them to become our first guinea pig. And uh, after some good R&D and a bit of design, we came up with this, which is the Eurostar train manager's bag. It's been made from their old uniforms, staff uniforms. You can see the raincoats lining from their jackets, and even the anti-macassars, the um, headrests in the trains went into the bags. And um, so these, I'm very pleased to say, uh, with no great ease, were manufactured in Woolwich in South London. So we managed that goal of, of getting closer to home. And I think manufacturing in the UK is very much fraught with challenges, but we, we, we did manage to do it, so that was quite exciting. And the bags are currently um, on the trains right now. Here's some of the train managers modeling theirs. And we ha we've had really good feedback from the train managers because the bags act as a really good talking point to communicate with customers, to talk about Eurostar's commitment to sustainability in a much different way. I think sometimes it's hard to, to illustrate um, you know, what, what climate change, what cutting carbon emissions is all about. But when you've got a product, it's a, it's a really good platform for doing that. And finally, we've got the Royal Mail storm sack made out of Royal Mail's um, old disused storm jackets, which they bought in as a marketing product. So that's our upcycling history. That's our story up until today. And in practice, upcycling is not easy. And I would not recommend it to, to anyone, really. There's lots of challenges and lots of hurdles along the way, um, which we continue to, to overcome and to work through. But ultimately, upcycling, although it's a great story, it's a great platform for good stories and for communicating, it still doesn't actually deal with the, the, the root problem of textile waste. Um, it may be a good stepping stone, but it doesn't actually solve the problem. In order to do so, we need to understand why we have waste in the first place. Um, so this is a, the current model of um, corporate wear. You've got virgin resources, uh, which are then made into fibers, into textiles, manufactured into products. They're then worn by staff, and primarily they're thrown away. They end up in landfill. Um, there's about 10,000 tons of corporate wear that gets distributed annually in the UK alone. And out of that, only 5% is being recollected and, and recycled. So it's a, it's a huge problem. But it's a linear model. That's why. There's, there, there's two reasons behind this. Firstly, the garments haven't been designed to be reused. So the original design brief for, say, a shirt may have been you know, a collar here and a short sleeve and some purple stripes and make it functional um, for hot weather. But nowhere in that design brief did it say, design an end-of-life solution into this shirt. So it's really no surprise that um, bad design ends up as waste. Secondly, there's no real perceived value to these resources. They're made from dirt cheap polyester, uh, a dime a dozen, and there's just no real economic imperative to value the resources. Well, 
until now. I think, as most of you know, this picture is really starting to change. You've got the rising cost of, of cotton, of oil, all sorts of natural resources. And according to the projections, with something like oil, and, and which polyester is primarily made of, is set to double by 2020. So that's going to have huge implications on any products or systems uh, that relies on oil in the future. So the need for companies to understand the real value of resources now is starting to become a lot more obvious. So this led us down a road of questioning. If textile waste has value, how do we capture that value? And how do we design waste out of the picture altogether? And I think the answer, which not just for textiles but all resources, is by creating fully closed loop systems in the future. Closed loop, circular economics, cradle to cradle, they all have a similar name, similar phrase, and they're coming from the same idea, which is we need to look to nature and to look at natural systems for answers. So for instance, nature doesn't do waste, which is quite interesting. So how can we learn from this and apply it to our own businesses and to industry? Industrial ecology, we're hearing a lot more of that today. I don't know if any of you heard of the, um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. They've just put out a new report with McKinsey around closed loop um, circular e economics and how that could transform the way we do business in, in the UK and in the world. So I highly recommend it if you haven't heard about it yet. Um, so what would closed loop, what would a closed loop system look like for clothing? This here is the loop we've developed for corporate wear, which could easily be, be applied in the future to consumer wear as well. And one of the most important aspects of this model is the collection system. We need to recapture the resources in the first place. If, they, if they're not recaptured, we can't reuse them. Now, the first phase of the loop deals with the textile waste that we have today that's currently in the system. It's got one recollection point, and various routes for that waste to go down. We've got um, uh, upcycling as one option, reuse or, or downcycling, where the materials get turned into scraps for the automobile industry or, or furniture stuffing. But the problem with that route is that it's not truly closed loop. There's only one opportunity for reuse, and then it goes to landfill again. When we look in the second loop here, that's when it starts to get really interesting because we're introducing a new kind of resource, a resource which has been designed to be reused again and again and again. So that term waste suddenly takes on a new meaning. We lose the word waste and we, we replace it with resource. One example of closed loop textiles is a fabric called EcoCircle, which this little bag is made out of. And it's just a conventional type uh, polyester fabric. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, but it's put through a process. After the, pr after the product gets used, it gets recollected, sent back to the manufacturer. And uh, it goes through a, a system of repolymerization, uh, where the polyester garment gets broken back down into its original chemical components. So that can be turned into a polyester sludge, which then becomes yarn and turned into fabric and garments all over again. So as long as you've got that recollection system in place, you can use those resources over and over and over again with no degradation. It's a fully closed loop system. Now EcoCircle is a, it's a great technology. We went out there in November and visited the factories, lots of shiny machinery and got to wear the yellow hats. Um, but the problem with it is that it's not currently uh, commercially viable outside of Japan. So that's creating a big, big, big barrier. Um, in the short term, we're working with them to look at bringing some of the economies of scale needed to take that product to market. There's a real need for it. It's also safe to say that other closed loop solutions around textiles and other, other resources for sure are clearly needed beyond Japan. So in the meantime, uh, we've managed to support, stroke persuade, the fast food giant McDonald's to be the first UK company to commit 
to achieving 100% closed loop in their staff uniforms. A very tall order. I don't think they know what they've gotten themselves into. The reality of this is, is that the infrastructure and the supply chain for closed loop textiles is in its early, early days. It doesn't quite exist yet. It's not going to happen overnight. And I think this, this, is, this is the reason why innovation and collaboration are, are greatly needed. We need big brands like McDonald's and values-led companies and organizations like those under the cooperative umbrella to take a real leap of faith, to choose to use their buying power, their influence, and their scale to bring these type of solutions to market and to help create that tipping point that's really needed. So look out for what I never thought I would hear myself saying, but the coolest ever corporate wear design um, at the Olympics this summer, worn by McDonald's staff, designed by Wayne Hemingway, and a sprinkling of closed loop textiles. So it's a first step, but a very important step for McDonald's and, and for all of us on the road to a closed loop future. Now to finish, we've got the sky is the limit slide. Um, I really believe that the whole concept of closed loop and industrial ecology, circular economics, whatever you want to call it, it's the next wave of sustainability. Sustainability has always been about reducing this and cutting that and taking things away. Less this, less, less fun. And I think that's not very appealing to, to any of us. It's certainly not a good way to inspire people and to get them engaged. People really want abundance. However, the whole no notion of closed loop resources throws the way we engage with stuff completely on its head. So if you imagine a world of closed loop textiles, an infinite supply, ones that can be reused over and over and over again, suddenly the idea of fast fashion doesn't seem like such a bad idea. I think there are companies like Primark will be reveling in the, the revolution when that day comes. But in the meantime, uh, I think the halcyon days where resources um, have been dirt cheap in our throwaway culture, they're coming to an end, as we all know. And we swiftly need to, to move to new models, to new closed loop systems and solutions. So as the title of my talk says, I'm convinced uh, that we all need to be going closed loop or wearing nothing because one day we're not going to have a choice. Thanks. <laughs>